Hey guys, it's Jackson here from Titanic Games, and today we are going to look at adding kind of some, uh, you know, item dropping functionality for our inventory and equipment system, because uh, we didn't have that before. So with that, let's get started. Uh, first thing we're going to do is um, let's just refresh ourselves on what we're going to be using. So we'll go to our interactables folder here, and we'll go to this BPI inventory. So in here we have this enable action bar function, you know, and this drop item function. So both of these we haven't used yet, but we're going to use them now. Um, so let's go ahead and start doing that. So we can close out of everything we don't need, uh, but we do need you know the character. Um, next, we'll go to our UI and open up the UI inventory item, and we'll also open up the UI inventory. Okay. So first, let's go to the inventory item. Go to the graph, and we see here, you know, over here we have this kind of. Uh, you know, use item function being called, but we're going to move this into the inventory itself, um, and so that we can you know have like a, a use button and then a drop button. Okay. So to do this, we are going to actually just delete this. Okay. And basically, we are going to um, then uh, what is it? Excuse me. Uh, we are going to say enable action bar. Okay, and we want to send the message, so we'll untick context sensitive to find the message. Okay, and all we're going to do is just, you know, enable the action bar. Okay, so by default it's going to be um, not enabled, so you know, unabled, uh, and we will enable it and kind of send through the item info here so that we when we press like, you know, the use button or the drop button, we know which item to drop or use. Okay? So we'll um, we're not going to send it to our character. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to use our character to get the inventory uh, reference. Okay, and we're going to send it to the inventory reference. Right now, um, we don't need to worry about checking if it's valid or not because it will have to be open if we're even going to be able to click on an item. All right. So next thing we'll do is we'll go to our UI inventory. Okay, and let's change up you know the setup we have here. So first thing we're going to do is click on the vertical box itself, and I'm going to change its size to about. 660. Okay, make it a little bigger. Now down here at the bottom is where we're going to add that kind of uh, the box that we need, or the box that'll have like the use um, inventory. So what we'll do is we will go find a horizontal box. Okay, and we'll add this to the canvas panel, um, which is you know the canvas panel inside the vertical box. I mean, and we'll take this box and we're going to call it um, action, you know, menu or action bar. I guess we'll call it action bar. Okay, and we'll make it a variable because we need to be able to edit um, if it's enabled or not. So next, we'll just untick is enabled because um, we want it to not be enabled by default. Okay, then we're going to anchor this to the bottom full, so the full length of the bottom. Okay, so we'll reset its offsets here. Now for Y, um, for the alignment, we're going to say one, so that'll push it up. And then for the size Y, we're going to say about seventy because that'll get it you know closer to the top there. All right now that we have our action bar, we are going to add some buttons here, so that we can, you know, for our use and unuse. So we'll add, um, or before that actually, or no, yes, we'll add a button. Sorry, <laughs> we'll add a button. We're going to set this to fill, and then we're going to say horizontal and um, horizontal and vertically center alignment. Okay, so we've done that. Now we're going to name this. Right, it's already a variable. We're going to name this use button. Okay. And we're going to add some text to it really quick. And this text, we will say center align. Okay, and we can leave the size as is. Um, but you know, you can play around with it to get whatever you like. But then we'll change the text here to, uh, you know, just use. Okay, so this button will be the use button. Okay, then now we'll go back to the button and the style, and we'll change up kind of, you know, how it looks, what it, you know, what its appearance is. Um, so kind of keeping with this style, right? Um, we'll go ahead and find what our tint is here and we can just copy this hex linear value. Okay. And we can go down to our button now and click the tint for normal and paste it. Okay, that'll automatically set it. Then we'll do the same for pressed. All right. Now for hovered, right? We're going to do the same. We're going to use the same value. Uh, but only this time we are going to um, change its alpha to about 0.5, so it'll be a little translucent then. Um, you know that might be too low, but we'll just we'll have to see. 
Okay, so we've got our you know our button stuff set up, which is great. Um, you can leave the paddings alone if you want, or or change them. I don't. It doesn't matter. Uh, but now that we have that use button, we're going to control C to copy it, and then we'll just paste it right back onto the action bar. So now we have two buttons that we can use. Okay, and I'm gonna. So we'll take this uh, new one now, and we'll call this drop button, and we'll change the text for it to drop. Now, you know, of course, you could say something like drop item, and for use, you could say use item. That would probably be a little more specific, um, but we'll just go with that for now. Okay, so compile and save. Now that we have that made, right, we can go into our graph, and we can do some stuff with it. So go to the event graph, okay, find some space right here-ish, and first thing we need to do is add an event for this enable action bar. Okay, so we'll right click and say event um, enable. Oops. Oh yes, we aren't implementing the interface, so we go need to go to class settings, add, and we're going to add the BPI inventory interface. Okay, so compile and save really quick. Now we should be able to find it. So we'll say event enable action bar. Okay, so when we receive this event, then we are going to you know cr set um, our own sort of item info here. So we'll promote this to a variable, and we'll just call this kind of selected item info. Okay, that's um, so we'll do that, and then since we've made the action bar editable, we can take it now, get it, and we will say set is enabled to true. Okay, so we'll set it to true. So now it's enabled, and now we're able to click on those you know use and drop buttons, which is what we want. All right, next, let's add some on clicked events for each of those buttons. So let's start with the use button. So on clicked, okay, on clicked, we will cast to um, our ch my character. We will get the player character, okay. And then all we're going to do is call the use item uh, message. So untick context sensitive if you need to find it. So we'll say use item. Okay, we'll plug this in to the target, and then for item info, we're going to use that selected item info. So we'll get it, say get, plug it in. All right, great. Now after we've done that, we're going to want to reset the action bar to not enabled. So we'll take this little part, copy paste, hook it up, and then untick is enabled. So now it'll be not uh, enabled again, and we'll need to click on another item to be able to you know, access those, uh, the use and drop button again. Okay, now we will take our drop button and add on clicked. And we'll basically just take this whole same thing. So copy paste. Uh, but instead of use item, we're going to call that drop item function or message, I should say. So we'll say drop item, message, hook up the item info, hook up the target, and hook this up finally. Okay, so you should have this as your setup for each of the buttons now. Okay, and then enable action bar. So now the last thing that we need to do is go to our character and add the event drop item. Okay, so we'll right click, say event drop item. Right now on event drop item, we are going to, you know, remove it from our inventory. So we'll say remove from inventory. Hook this up. All right. Next, we are going to call the refresh inventory function. All right. And then finally, the last thing we're going to do is create one more function here that we will call um, spawn dropped item. Okay. So basically, in this, we are simply going to um, add, you know, first an input called item info. This will be of type f item info. We will first break it. Break f item. Oh, we should tech, check context sensitive again. That'll help us. Okay, now we're going to untick everything here but the class because we need the class for spawning things. Okay, then we're going to drag out and say spawn actor from class. And we'll hook up the class. Okay, now we need to, you know, make a transform of where we want to spawn it. So we're going to try to spawn it out in front of our character a little ways. So what we'll do is we're going to use this arrow component as kind of, you know, trying to, we're going to, you know, use it and kind of somewhere out here, drop the item. 
Okay, so we'll get the arrow component. We'll get its world location. Okay, then we want to get its forward vector, so the forward facing direction of it. Then we're going to multiply this by a float to kind of push it out into the world a little ways. And we'll say about 200. Okay, now for uh, this we're going to um, take the world location plus this new vector here. Okay, and then we are going to drag off of sp spawn transform and say make transform. And we'll plug in location to location. Now the last thing we need to make sure that we do is take our return value here, right? So, um, oh, also say always spawn, ignore collisions, okay? So basically when we, you know, drop something, um, we want to make sure that we set its collision. So set actor enable collision, we'll set that to true, okay? And then we want to um, get the interactable mesh. Okay, because remember this, you know, is, is passing in the class, and the class here is of type base item, which inherits from base interactable, which has on it that interactable mesh. Okay, and then we're going to take that and we're going to say set simulate physics, just so that it will fall to the ground now. Because if you don't simulate physics, it's just going to kind of sit there in the air. Okay, so there's that, right? So now we need to just simply add it on to the end of here. So say spawn dropped item you know, after the drop item, and then we'll plug in the item info from dropped item. So I'm just going to add some reroutes. Okay, compile and save. So if we test this out, let's hit play, All right, we can go pick up an item, it's added to our inventory, right? And now, if you notice down here, we have this use and drop button. Okay, so once we click something, it enables the use and drop so that we can actually do something with the item now. All right, and if we use it, it'll add it, you know, where it belongs. Um, but it'll also set this back to not enabled, so you can't use anything else yet until you have another item to select. Okay. Now we can, of course, remove it. Now if we select it again, and we want to, you know, kind of drop it, right? It should drop out here a little ways. Um, so we'll just say drop now. And there we go. It removes it from the inventory, drops it out into the world, and then you can go pick it up again if you want. Okay, so you can be running and drop it, and it'll fall, and it's you know it's got its collision on it, and the collision is really weird. So, you know, if you want, you could change up the collision so that it ignores pawns, which might not be a bad idea. Um, but I mean, for all intents and purposes, there you go, right? It's working. So, um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this has helped. Uh, if you liked the video, like or subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.